Live from the Interaction Media Studio in Morgantown, welcome to the Positively West Virginia Small Business Mastermind. I'm your host, Jim Matuga. It's July 20, July 30th, 2021. For those of you joining us live on Facebook, welcome and thanks for tuning in. We have an amazing mastermind panel for you guys today. We're going to have a great discussion for the next hour. With us today is Natalie Roper. She's the Executive Director at Gen Generation West Virginia. Natalie, good morning. Hey. Great to have you. We also have Lee Farabaugh. She's the co-founder and president at Core 10. Lee, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being on the show today. We really appreciate that. Jordan Costello is the lead instructor at New Force. Uh, Jordan, good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing good. Awesome. Great. Steve Williams is the mayor of Huntington. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jim. Absolutely. Uh, Natalie Roper uh, is the executive director of Generation West Virginia. I already said, uh, I already introduced you, but uh, I wanted to make sure we heard you uh, as well, Natalie. I didn't know. I think you may have been on mute at, at the time we introduced you. Oh, sorry. Hey. All right. All right. Good. <laughs> Good. Good. We also have, joining us is, uh, also this morning is our co-host this morning, my good friend, Mary Cook. She is the uh, owner and founder of Nexus Now Consulting. Mary, how the heck are you? I'm doing great, Jim. Thanks for having me as your co-host today. I'm looking forward to this conversation. Absolutely. Thanks for all your help setting it up, too. Before we jump in, I want to just tell our viewers a little bit about this program. Every week at this time, we gather like-minded business leaders from around West Virginia and the general area to discuss some of the most relevant business topics of today. Our goal with this mastermind group is to inspire and equip leaders to win in their business right here in the state of West Virginia. As always, we welcome your comments and questions. Just type those in the comment section and we'll get to those as well. Positively, West Virginia's Small Business Mastermind is brought to you by the State Journal, WVNews.com and Interaction Media. First, guys, I want to just jump right into it. I'll give our, our audience an opportunity to learn a little bit about you guys individually and the organizations that you're with. Uh, Lee, I'd love to start with you with Core 10. Tell us a little bit about yourself and Core 10 and how you're coming to the call today. Absolutely. Well, I'm so excited to be here because these are all my great friends who have helped us in our business so much, um, everybody on this call. So Core 10 is a financial technology product and services company. Um, we were founded in 2016. Our largest office is in the city of Huntington, West Virginia. We're so proud to be there. And we build technology for community banks and for some of the largest financial services providers in the country right there from Huntington, West Virginia. And the reason that we're in Huntington is what we call our Hearshore model. So we believe that doing software development work in the United States is the best solution for our customers. It's more convenient. It brings them uh, access to people who speak their language, <clears throat> are culturally compatible with them. And it's just, it makes development so much easier for everybody to kind of be in one place. And so um, we're in Huntington because we believe that talent is, is given out egalitarian, in an egalitarian fashion, you know, by however you believe, by God, by the universe, whatever. But opportunity isn't always the same. And many times in areas like Huntington, people grow up with this cultural belief that they have to leave in order to have a career, especially in technology. And we're here to say, no, absolutely, you do not have to do that. You can live in the place you love, the place you're from, the place you call home, and have an amazing and rewarding and financially uh, rewarding career right there in Huntington. So that's why we are there. And, and we found Huntington, just Huntington to be one of the most wonderful places um, to have an office and have a, a team right there in, in the city. So that's us. That's awesome, Lee. Thank you for that very eloquent description of what you do and, and, and the people that you serve. Steve, I'd, I'd love to throw to you as the mayor of Huntington, if you could uh, tell us a little bit about what that means for Huntington and some of the things you're working on right there in your beautiful city. Well, what Lee is pointing out is uh, the one thing that we can continue to, to strive uh, for individuals to embrace within the community, but also around the state of West Virginia and throughout Appalachia, very, very simply this. Um, when I was in mid-career, I moved to Chicago and had a sense coming from West Virginia, moving to Chicago, um, they're much more sophisticated um, uh, than, than, than we are, and would I be able to compete in that, in, in that environment? And I came to understand 
that in order for us to be good here, we would be great anywhere else. And uh, I learned that we can uh, swim in the deep waters up there. So when I had the opportunity to come home and eventually uh, ran, ran for mayor, um, my mantra very simply was, let's set standards that the rest of the nation would seek to emulate and uh, lift individuals up to understand is that you can do anything that you set your mind to. We can compete with anybody. And the one thing that Lee is pointing out, when you look at what residents of our area, people who are from here are able to, to, to do, is that it's comes actually from our DNA. You do realize that individuals who settled into the area of Appalachia came in with whatever was on their back, on the back of a mule, and they had to either make it, they had to grow it, or they had to repurpose something. And understanding by repurposing something means that individuals who grew up and settled in this, this area were the first applied engineers in the nation. It's in our DNA to be able to code. It's in our DNA to be able to, uh, to pursue careers in technology because we're critical thinkers and we're simply looking to figure out how to be able to fix something that isn't working properly. And uh, we're having that excitement in, in Huntington and that's a passion of mine to be somewhat evangelical about this <laughs> is that we can do that here and um, we're making altar calls all the time. And right now, coming out of COVID-19, this is a once in a lifetime opportunity for us to be able to show you can do what you love to do in a wonderful, loving, uh, beautiful environment in West Virginia and certainly in Huntington, West Virginia. <laughs> Mayor Steve Williams of Huntington, awesome message. Natalie Roper, uh, I would love to throw it to you now as the executive director at Generation West Virginia. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing down there in, in your role. Great. Um, well, this is such a treat. I'll echo what Lee said. It just feels like a, a friend call. It's really good to be with all of you guys. Um, awesome. We get to work, work together a lot on this screen, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, Lee and Mayor Williams really set this up well, this is why I do what I do at Generation every day. Generation West Virginia's mission is to attract, retain, and advance young people in the Mountain State. And we do that in a variety of ways, but what motivates us every day is what Lee and Mayor Willings were saying, is how do we make it possible for young people to do what they love right here at home and not feel like they have to leave to find success and opportunity, but that they can be whatever they wanna be and live the lives that we deserve right here at home without having to leave. And we know that that requires a lot of different things. It requires connecting people with economic opportunity and careers across a variety of sectors that allow them to stay. And it also means connecting them with community and opportunities to lead so that they're so that they want to stay and so that that retention is possible. Um, so at Generation West Virginia, we connect people with the kinds of jobs and community that they need to be able to stay. We do that through a variety of programs. I imagine today we'll talk mostly about New Force, which I'll let, New, uh, with, I'll let Jordan talk about, which is our program really focused on connecting people with tech opportunity in the state. We also have the Impact Fellowship Program that was created because we were hearing from young people I'm having a hard time finding a job in my field. But at the same time, we were hearing from employers like Lee that they were struggling to find people to fill open positions. So Generation has really become this connector. How do we connect the dots between the amazing people that are already here that want to be here and want to stay here and the great businesses that are already here and have good jobs here? How do we just connect those dots so that people are able to stay um, and that the business that are, businesses that are here are able to thrive and grow in the state? That's, we also awesome. yep. have a group of a uh, network of um, community organizations across the state to support people in their communities um, once they have a job. So that's us. 
Great job, Natalie. Thanks for teeing that up. And, and Jordan, she, she teed it up perfectly for you. Uh, Jordan Costello um, is with New Force. She's the lead instructor. Jordan, tell us a little bit about what you're doing, building sure. on what Natalie said. Absolutely. Thanks. Um, and I'll echo what Natalie said. It's so good to see all of y'all again. Um, we are so grateful for everybody on this call at New Force. Um, so New Force is a six-month tuition-free software development training program. Mm -hmm. um, Based in Huntington, we are actually remote, so we are accepting people across the state, not only in Huntington. Um, and we uh, are a partnership between Generation West Virginia and Mount West Community and Technical College and a lot of wonderful employers like Core 10. So we basically accept people from West Virginia who don't have any prior coding experience um, we have them go through a six month training program um, with a cohort of others where they learn not only how to code, but kind of the, the rhythms of the work environment in a software development workplace. So that by the time they graduate, um, they know kind of the foundations of software development and they're ready to go out and participate on the job and they know what to expect. Um, and they can kind of ease in gracefully on their first job. And we work really hard to connect them with open software development jobs in the state of West Virginia. Wow, that's huge. Well, this is a, a powerhouse panel for sure. Mary, I'd love to get your, well, first of all, Jordan, thank you for that. that that's awesome to, to, to learn Chris. about that. We're going to probably d d dive deeper a little bit into that. But Mary, I'd love to get your thoughts uh, on, on this discussion so far, 12 minutes in or so. Uh, bring us up to speed on what you're thinking. Yeah, so what an exciting uh, opportunity to have these folks. I mean, it's just, this is the definition of community on this screen right here. And I, I think it's brilliant, Natalie, what you've done with Generation West Virginia to, to really understand something's missing and be the connector. My business is called Nexus Now Consulting. I'm all about making connections. And so I love that you are connecting employers and people who need jobs and you're doing real work. I love that you're in Huntington. I love what's happening in Huntington. I think it's just a very positive um, thing for West Virginia and this to be in the FinTech and the software development. I mean, we talk a lot about moving from, uh, not, um, moving from coal mining to data mining and this knowledge industry, this knowledge sector is alive and well and growing. And here are the folks on the street who are actually making it happen. I'm delighted that you all agreed to come and talk today. And I, um, I think what you're doing is really wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that, Mary. And it's, uh, it's, it is, it's, it's a beautiful thing just listening to you guys talk. So, you know, I guess Lee, from your perspective is the founder of a, of a uh, for-profit business, right? You're looking for quality team members for core 10 and you found a, a home here in West Virginia, right there in Huntington. Talk a little bit about, um, some of the, like the real opportunities for people, you know, that are looking for jobs right now, kind of talk a little bit about that opportunity that you see out there as the president of your company and the co-founder of Core 10. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, as I said before, we build software, uh, financial technology software products, and we provide financial technology services to uh, the industry. And so that's pretty broad actually. And, and we employ people with lots of different skill sets. So obviously we employ software developers and, and frankly, you know, our team would not be the size it is without Natalie and Jordan, really, truly. The pipeline from Generation West Virginia and from New Force is tremendous for us. And, you know, our partnerships with Mount West, with Marshall, with WVU, with WVU Tech are all um, tremendous for us. I, I like to say that when you're recruiting in a, in a big city, it's like a fire hose. You just turn it on and tons of candidates. <laughs> but when you're recruiting in, in Huntington, you have to get your set of garden hoses and put them together. And, the, and these are all of our garden hoses because um, together they make a tremendous talent pipeline for us. So we hire developers and, and part of our model, this Hearshore model, is that we put together development teams that are anchored by a senior developer, but are really the horsepower of those teams are um, junior and mid-level developers. So we hire graduates right out of New Force, right out of undergrad, right out of a two-year program at Mount West, and they can jump on a team and be mentored and coached and, and uh, supported by the other developers on the team. And that's part of why it works financially for our clients. Um, you know, Obviously, there's a reason people go overseas. It's more expensive. 
to do development in the US. But when we put our Hearshore teams, the way we structure them together, and we have our junior and mid-level developers doing the lion's share of the development work on those teams, all of a sudden, it actually can pencil for our clients. It makes tons of sense. And it provides this ladder for the developers to grow. Mm -hmm. And I, we have a developer on our team who joined us as a engineer one entry level five years ago. She's now a senior developer. She did wow. that in five years. She's an incredible person, but you know, yeah. it's possible. And then the other side of our business, we work with a lot of SaaS companies. That stands for software as a service. That's pretty much anything these days that you subscribe to, create an account to, you know, it's a CRM, it's, it's something like that. And we have a team of implementation analysts and senior implementation resources. And what they do is onboard new clients onto those types of systems. And there's all kinds of data migration. They work very intensely with Excel. They configure dashboards, reports, navigation. They essentially make that system sizzle for the customer. And those resources tend to come out of a finance, business, economics background. So it's not all developers at Corten. It's folks kind of across the gamut of, um, of business and technology. Um, and obviously, with, you know, banking skills are, are, are important, but if they don't have them ahead of time, they can learn them on the job with us. So that's awesome. I know, uh, Lee, from your perspective, I believe Sarah Biller is on your board of, of directors at Corten, and she's yeah. been a, a guest on this uh, particular mastermind uh, panel group. Uh, over the last several months, uh, a couple of times, and okay. and she just has she talks about fintech, and that's kind of what you're that kind of encompasses all this stuff that you're talking about, right? Is right. A, is a global brand. When yeah. I'm, I'm interested in learning about the the Hearshore model, is that is it the sort of the antithesis of offshore? Is that how you kind mm -hmm. of so yeah. instead of it being is. offshore, you're Hearshore? Okay, that's exactly right. It, yeah. It, yeah, and the idea is that you know people think in order to do software development in a cost-effective manner, they have to go overseas. Yeah. But a lot of times they're they're dazzled by this, you know, twenty dollars an hour, and they don't realize there's all these hidden costs. You can't just put a team on it, you know, twelve hours away and expect it's all going to happen magically. And you have to have senior resources here and there. There's travel. There's insurance. There's it, it adds up. It's not actually as cheap as they think. And then if we in the United States shift our mindset from thinking that the only place where good technology work can happen is in New York, Chicago. If we shift our thinking away from that limitation and we realize that there's tons of talented people everywhere across the whole country, then we realize that you can put a development center in Huntington, West Virginia, and the caliber is every bit as high as it is in those other places, but the cost of living. A megaphone. <laughs> What's that? I said, I want to give you a megaphone <laughs> with that comment. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true. I mean, like I, I wasn't making it up before when I said we build technology for some of the biggest financial services companies in the country and we do it from Huntington. That's so, awesome. you know, yeah, that's, so that's the Hearshore model is we have figured out how to make software development affordable in the United States. Steve. I would love to get your thoughts on that and, and what it's really, you know, the impact that it's having for the city of Huntington, having, having core 10 right there in, in your city. The, the, the one thing, but the wonderful aspect of, of core 10 is, is that uh, I'm always saying you can get there from here. And what core 10 is, is showing is that once again, as I said, in my opening comments, we can compete with anybody in the world. Um, Michelangelo was known for saying that the greater danger for most of us is not that we set our goals too high and fall short, but that we establish our aim too low and achieve the mark. We've got to lift our own expectations of ourselves. Um, it, this is a problem in West Virginia. It's a problem in Appalachia. I'm, I'm not saying it critically. It's just that we have a tendency not to acknowledge all that we are capable of doing and what Lee is doing, what we're doing through Generation West Virginia is helping individuals to understand is that uh, we're in a position to be able to enable solutions. We want to enable solutions. If you do that, if you're becoming identified as a community, as a business, uh, as a 
as a state, then as a nation. If you're enabling solutions, then what you're going to find is that truly you're in a position where you're becoming transformational. What I want individuals to be able to look at when they see, once again, when they see in Huntington and that we are enabling individuals to pursue careers that is not just segmented into the energy sector, is that there is a broad spectrum under which we have the mental capacity to be able to, to compete. We have the drive to be able to, to compete. Um, but through this is that we can become transformational. And the message to anybody who has moved away is that we're waiting on you to come home. <laughs> yes. we're, we're, we're setting the table for you to come on home. I mean, so right now we're celebrating our 150th anniversary in, in Huntington. And what we're simply saying to folks is that uh, come on home and you might decide to stay. Yeah. And, and, and Mayor, I, I also... You know, echo that in, in saying the time to do it is now, not yes. 10 years from now. You know, I mentioned Sarah Biller, you know, a couple of months ago, we had, um, we had John Chambers uh, on this program with Sarah Biller. Um, and, and we had this amazing conversation for an hour about technology and the opportunity to, uh, to attract people back to West Virginia. And he, he made, he made a really great comment. And he said that there's, there's a window open, a door of opportunity, if you will, here in West Virginia. And, and it's not going to be 15 years. It's going to be like two to three years. And the clock is ticking on that right now. And with uh, Ascend WV and the program uh, that, that Brad and Elise Smith have, have brought to West Virginia and, uh, you know, a, a great Marshall graduate, right? Uh, bringing all these, uh, this awareness to move people back to West Virginia or to have remote workers live here in West Virginia and do their jobs for companies outside of West Virginia. Those, that's really jumpstarting this, right? And so in a pandemic kind of helped us a little bit uh, with Virgin Hyperloop and all the other amazing things that are happening. Uh, Data Robot uh, bringing an office here in West Virginia. There's a lot of energy in the tech space right now, and there's a tremendous opportunity. You know, uh, Jordan, I want to go back to you and, and really talk a little bit about, you know, if somebody's listening to this, a young person is listening to this program, whether it's live or in, in the recorded uh, episode that'll be out there, and, and they're thinking, wow, I've, I've thought of a tech career, but I always thought that I'd have to go to Silicon Valley or something like that. How do they get plugged in? I mean, what's the best opportunity for them if they have this on their heart, that they want to pursue a, a tech career? What's the best opportunity for them right now? That's a great question. Um, so thankfully, we live in the internet age and there are a million free online resources to try. Um, coding or try whatever else you're kind of interested in. So like tech is a really broad field, like software sure. is one piece of it. And then there's there's a lot of other things and there's free training online for all of them. So, so I think my first piece of advice would be find out which piece of the tech industry you're most interested in. Mm -hmm. um, like Udemy has a lot of free courses. Um, if you're particularly interested in coding, Code Academy is really good and it's free. Um, so, so kind of find your niche within the tech industry and, and, and also keep in mind your learning style. So like some people learn really well from listening to videos. Some people learn really well from reading and then trying it themselves. I've seen a lot of people give up on coding because they were trying a resource that was for a learning style that didn't work for them at all. Uh, and then once you find something that you like, like if it's coding, then there are a lot of really good options. Um, all of the community and technical colleges, I think have really interesting programs. New Force is one option. Um, for your degree is one option. So I think it's about knowing your learning style, knowing your time constraints and finding an option that works for you. Awesome. I love that advice, specifically with New Force. Now, when, when they come into and in, in enroll in your program, you said it's tuition free, right? Are, are they walking out of that with, with the online uh, course with some sort of certificates? What does that look like? So they do get um, some certificates through Mount West Community and Technical College, and it's like certificate completion in full stack software development. Um, it's not a degree. They do get a certain number of credits towards an associate's degree, but they don't walk away with a, so it's a 
But what we found from employers is that they're mainly looking for a portfolio of projects um, that can demonstrate experience and mastery in certain tech stacks more than they're looking for certain certifications. Awesome. Lee, you're shaking your head as an employer. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, we we love our new force grads. You know, they they come directly from new force, hit the ground running. One of the things I love about new force, and it, it was born out of a um, a software development boot camp here in Nashville called Nashville Software School, and and that's where Jordan got her certification. Um, is that they teach that that curriculum teaches you? It teaches you a, a stack. It teaches you a specific coding language, but it also teaches you how to learn other languages, and that. It, once you know that, no one can take that away from you. You can learn anything you want to learn. And so our team, we've had team members who have come in with maybe they, they're they a C-sharp developer, but they can quickly and you know, a matter of weeks transition and start working on a Java project or a Python project they, because they understand how to learn. And they understand that the underlying concepts are all essentially the same. Very cool. Natalie, you know, listening to Jordan um, speak about her kind of advice for young people, I, I imagine these are good jobs that are available out there that, that employers are looking for graduates of New Force uh, programs and, and those kinds of things. Is, is, that, is that the case? Yeah, absolutely. We've been really proud to have maintained an 86% job placement rate within six months of graduation. Wow. Um, which is the same placement rate as Nashville Software School. Um, so we're just really proud of being able to keep up that caliber of job placement. And all of our graduates are working for companies based in West Virginia. Um, and I think what has been especially exciting, we just graduated um, a cohort a few weeks ago now, Jordan, two weeks. Um, weeks. And how many weeks? I think two two weeks. Um, oh. What percent of the cohort already has jobs? They're 50%. They're they were 50% placed when they graduated. Um, oh. well, yeah, they, this cohort is the first really post COVID cohort that we've, so we're seeing the, the economy kind of grind back into gear after the pandemic. Yeah. And I think that's been a really, so, I mean, I think for us, what we're seeing is we're going to hit our placement rate way faster than six months. And of course, what that indicates to us is that there is increasing job demand in tech, right? Um, and that's actually how we decide whether to grow our program or not. We at Generation West Virginia, we are in this for connecting people with jobs. Um, so we're connecting them with skills so that they can get jobs. <laughs> um, yeah. So we really only grow our program. We, we grow the number of students that we accept based on that placement rate. So for us, if we're able to place at least 86% in three months, for example, instead of six, that's an indicator to us that it's time yeah. for us to grow our program. We are that's anticipating <laughs> based on okay. our past month um, that we are, that it's going to be time for us to grow the program to really meet this increasing tech demand. That's awesome. Natalie, I, my thoughts, you know, I got a couple of questions for you. Are, now, are you, are you seeing this all across West Virginia or is it just in the Charleston Huntington area or what, what's your thoughts on that? Are you, are, in other words, are you guys doing work up here in, I'm in Morgantown. Yeah. Are you guys doing a, all right. That's, that's awesome to know. We we're have a, people, we're placing people statewide and this program um, is in partnership with Mount West and the community technical college system. We were based in person in Huntington. COVID was, you know, an opportunity where everyone went remote, including us. And we were able to really see that this curriculum translates remotely. Um, so we've now been admitting remote cohorts. Many of our students are still living in Huntington. And of course, many of our graduates are working in Huntington. <laughs> um, but awesome. we That's also awesome. have students that are living all over the state. And we are placing people in jobs all over the state. We're working with Bravo, for example, who's up yeah. in town. Yeah, yeah we've, we've, had, uh, we've had Gino on the program as well. Awesome. Yeah. Lindsay is one of our grads. She's working with Bravo now. Awesome. Um, yeah. That's and great. we have a lot of folks who are going to IBM um, in Kaiser, for example. Um, so awesome. we've got we've got folks working all all over the state. That's exciting. And Natalie, and, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna. Sorry, Jim. Um, I think I heard you say West Virginians um, in the program, and this is strictly you're not taking people outside of West Virginia, and you're not placing people outside of West Virginia. Do I understand that correctly? 
Yeah, for New Force, um, there because this is a partnership with the community technical college system, all of our students have to be West Virginia residents. Um, mm -hmm. And yes, we are placing them in jobs in West Virginia. Um, it's not a requirement. I mean, if, if someone got a job outside the state, again, we want people to succeed and thrive. Of course, we hope that's here. Right. We right. really intentionally build partnerships with employers in the state. And we don't take job, we don't leave job placement to chance at New Force. We are, in addition to all of the really critical technical skills that we're teaching, um, Courtney Sussman on our team at New Force is leading an, uh, a full career prep curriculum that's happening alongside the technical curriculum, supporting people in interviewing and resume prep. And we're able to then work with folks like Gino and IBM and Lee to make sure that we're connecting those dots, right? Like hand to hand, if we hear someone's got a job, awesome. share it with our students, connect them for an interview. Um, we are doing that work for West Virginia based employers so that it's, you know, hopefully just removing barriers that people are facing in finding jobs. There are so many more jobs than people seem to know about. Um, and so often employers don't even pick post positions, right? We're trying to really just reduce all of those barriers through our relationships and through the skills that we give to them. That's awesome stuff. Our guests once again today on the Positively West Virginia Small Business Mastermind are Natalie Roper. She's the executive director of Gener Generation West Virginia. Lee Farabaugh, she's the co-founder and president at Core 10. Jordan Castello is the lead instructor for New Force. Stephen Williams is the mayor of Huntington. And of course, my co-host today is Mary Cook. She is the owner of uh, Nexus Now Consulting. Guys, one of the things that, that's running through my brain is, you know, we hear uh, a lot of diversification of the West Virginia economy. And that's a theme that I'm hearing right here, even though we haven't said those words, the FinTech, the, the entire tech space uh, is, is a huge opportunity for that diversification. We also hear a lot about workforce development. And I, even though we haven't used those terms, I'm hearing that underlying theme here because that's ultimately what you guys are doing uh, with New Force as well as Generation West Virginia. And I love the fact that we're coming together in community and connecting the dots, as, as you said, Natalie, I, I love that. Mary, I'm, I'm curious to, to get your thoughts on, uh, you know, midway point of this show, uh, what are your thoughts and in, 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 in you're kind of in, intertwined in this whole network of, of people here yeah. on this call. What, I'd love to hear what you're thinking. Yeah, and funny because diversification of our economy is something that I wrote down as well. And it's uh, <laughs> wonderful to see that um, because we're hearing more and more about FinTech and more and more about the tech space. I'd be remiss not to mention that it just rings a bell with um, Jim Estep up in Fairmont at the High Technology Foundation who has the Come Home to West Virginia program. He's been beating this drum for a long time. But what I really hear in this conversation is what Brad Smith likes to talk about is the abundance mindset. And I, I hear that in, the, in, these, in this program. I hear that there are people who want, the whole purpose you have this program is to be positive about West Virginia. And there's a real abundance mindset in this group. And together, we're growing a sector of, this in, of the industry that can be transformational for West Virginia and indeed is people like Sarah Biller and John Chambers and Brad Smith. And then people on the ground, all these people are moving the state forward in a rapid pace, at a rapid pace to make transformational changes. And I'm, I'm it's just wonderful to be able to see it in action. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel like in any any endeavor, you're always going to have the naysayers. And typically the naysayers are the ones that are sitting on the sidelines saying it can't be done while they're watching the people do it. You know, I, I always, always, always find that paradigm you know, pretty interesting. Uh, you know, Steve, uh, as the mayor of Huntington, I'd love to get your perspective on, again, you know, you're, you're an optimistic guy. I've never met you in person. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever met you, but I love the, the message that, you're, that you've come to, uh, to, to this call with today. Uh, it is an optimistic viewpoint. It is an abundance mindset. Talk a little bit about uh, some of the other things that you're doing in Huntington to really, um, you know, address this idea of, if we can compete. We can swim in the deep waters, as you said. Well, we have Marshall University in 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 in, Hun in Huntington, and the, what we what I see my responsibility is is for all of those graduates is to set the table and give them the opportunity to be able to make a decision to stay in in Huntington. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, if 
we none of us have uh, traveled by airplane um, anywhere lately. But I, when I would get on United, they'd say, we, we know you have a choice when you're uh, choosing an airline and we thank you for choosing United. Well, every one of our students have choices uh, to be able to make and it's our responsibility in the community to be able to, to show that there is an opportunity for you. So what we're doing in Huntington is truly trying to set the, the table. Um, right next to Marshall, there was a uh, historically a series of factories that have been building everything from uh, uh, train cars to uh, making uh, blue dye and uh, and and making suits and there's another and and, and clothing and, and such. All of those factories have shut down. And after a while, they were closed for such a long time that you drive by and you really just became blind to it. Well, what we've done is we've acquired the property and all the, it's nearly 100 acres right in the middle of, of Huntington, right next to Marshall University, right on the river, right down the street from, from the hospital. And we're redeveloping uh, that, that property. And frankly, this is the opportunity for us. You were mentioning earlier, uh, uh, Jim, that now is the opportunity. We don't have five to 10 years. We have to do it right now. I mean, yeah. there has got to be a sense of urgency uh, that we're having. And frankly, um, we've been able to, we spent the last eight years planning some things. And fortunately, it's something that has not been birthed by the Chamber of Commerce, nor by the mayor's office. It's a, a plan that's been put together by the entire community coming together. And what we see that's going to be happening in this uh, property right next to Marshall University, what would you do if you were, had property to develop for 21st century technology and it was right next to a university? Yeah. You take full advantage <laughs> of, of, that, of that brain trust that's, that, that's right there. And that's the opportunity that we have. Mark my word, it's not going to take uh, 10 or 15 years. Within five to seven years, individuals are going to be looking down in the Ohio River Valley and the new it city is Huntington, West Virginia. Um, we think of Asheville, we think of Chattanooga, we think of Greenville, South Carolina, Huntington, West Virginia. Understand this, in the Ohio River Valley, we're the fourth largest market in the Ohio River Valley. You have Pittsburgh, you have Cincinnati, you have Louisville, and the Huntington market is the fourth largest. And imagine if you were sitting up in outer space, looking down into the Ohio River Valley, you're seeing in Pittsburgh those bright lights, seeing those bright lights over in Cincinnati and the bright lights over in, in Louisville, but then there's this one beam, this tiny beam of light, just bright as can be, coming up in this one little area. It's Huntington, West Virginia. Where are people yeah. going to be drawn to? <laughs> They're going to be drawn to, to, to that. You know, so we can get there from here. And what Lee is, awesome. is doing, what we're doing in New Force is we're, we're reminding ourselves what we are capable of doing. The responsibility of city government is to provide services, but more than anything else, Beyond that is to set the table and set the expectations and create the opportunity for others like Lee to be able through their entrepreneurial spirit to be able to come forward and say, this is where we're going to sit down and then give the opportunity for individuals throughout West Virginia to be able to compete. That's awesome, Steve. I, I, I appreciate that. I'm, I'm so glad we're recording this. So we captured that on video, that, that little... Yeah. Uh, you, you, you said that you were evangelizing, and I'm just going to start calling you Pastor, Pastor <laughs> Steve instead of Mayor Steve, and, and I just got to give you an amen, and I would also argue that, you know, I, you know Morgantown's right there with you, and, and I love Morgantown. I've been here since, I think, 1980, and if I ever do live uh, leave Morgantown, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come and live in, in Huntington. And, and, uh, well, that what we're going to do is have you so prosperous that you're going to have a place in Morgantown, and then you'll have a place in, in Huntington, yes. and then... Uh, that's that's the way I'm working on him 
I'm working uh, on him in this yeah, corridor. Ma- I'm working on him. Mary, Mary may open that office down there for interaction media. I love it. And the other thing that reminded me of too, and, and, and you were talking about looking out up from outer space. I think Ri- Sir Richard Branson must have seen a beam emanating from Tucker County as well. I, I, I yeah. just my thought. I, I don't know if that to be a fact, so don't report on that. But uh, I, I, he must have seen something there. So that's that's pretty awesome. I, uh, you know, I think about you know. Um, you know, what we're talking about really is uh, for, for young people uh, in, in our state, people who have left our state and may be thinking about, wow, why did I, why did I move to Chicago? You know, I could have I stayed in, in, in West Virginia and done this job remotely. You know, it's all about, to me, casting a vision. And, and to me, vision is, is, is I, I'm kind of a simple thinker. I, I think a vision of what could be and what should be. And, you know, I, I'm reminded back, this was back in uh, ni- 1998, I, I'm a Rotarian here in the Morgantown Rotary Club, and I, I was asked to lead a youth exchange t- uh, team to Calcutta, India. So it was me and four high school kids. I had never been out of the country except for the Bahamas at that point in my life. And these kids had never been further than Myrtle Beach from Morgantown. <laughs> here I am leading four high school kids to Calcutta, India. And the thing that I learned on that trip, we were gone for about a month in, in, in one of the most densely populated cities in the world at the time. It was the actual, you know, they called it the, uh, the Sea of Humanity back in the day. Uh, but the thing that occurred to me was if we could just show these young people that vision, what I'm talking about, what could be and what should be, the possibilities. And I think what you guys are doing really are, are – or, or casting that vision in a sense of saying, this is what could be, and this is what should be stay here, enjoy the life. You know, you know, uh, one of you guys mentioned the DNA, you know, that's, that's, we're, we're meant to do these types of things. We're hardworking people, but, and, and, and not get caught up in, in the drug epidemic and all this other stuff. We have amazing opportunities right here in our state. It is people are getting it done every day. Just everybody on this call, you guys are, killing it and i love it and and i'm just i'm just encouraged by that mary i'd love to throw it to you for, for your comments. yeah yeah i i couldn't agree more um and i will i wanted to ask a question lee of of something that you mentioned that we sort of passed over that i thought is very important on this here shoring um i think the pandemic has certainly made us all aware that uh, the United States can be doing a lot more to um, support ourselves, but the culture piece that you talked about, I think, is really critical, and I think could make a gigantic difference to any company in the United States if they were to hear shore and use Americans to do provide some of the service. Could you talk a little bit about the culture and the language barriers that that you're addressing? Sure. Well, I come from a software development background myself. And I've been on those 5 a.m. calls with India or China, where by nine, you can't even remember what anybody said because you were up so early. And um, honestly, for me personally, so much of this is about convenience. Um, You know, there's nothing, it's a global economy. And I certainly don't mean to disparage people from other countries because there's lots of smart people all the world over. But when, what I'm talking about is when you're doing a software development project and deadlines are tight and budgets are tight and you're trying to make sure that everything gets done correctly and you're not having to do a lot of rework. The convenience factor of having your team, we kind of joke that Huntington's like two hours from anywhere. You know, we can get on a plane or get in the car and and be at our client's office if we need to do that. And sometimes we do need to do that and all sit in a room together. But when you can pick up the phone and the person that you are talking to understands what you're getting at and understands the American banking system, lending system, what it's like to buy a house in the United States, how the mortgage process works, and you don't have to explain all of that, it just makes everything go so much smoother. And those are some of those soft costs, you know, that I think people don't factor in when they just automatically think I have to offshore to to get this project done um, on budget. And kind of related to your question, but there was something Steve said that I wanted to just pick at a little bit. And that is, you know, why did we choose Huntington? Because we could have gone to a lot of different places and we had some ideas about places we wanted to go. We have an investor in Corten, his name is Joe Maxwell, and he grew up in Huntington. And he was listening to us talk about what we wanted. And he said, why don't you go to Huntington? It has all these things you're talking about. It has an amazing, you know, 
research institution in Marshall. It has a very savvy technical community college in Mount West. It has tons of smart people. And he said, one other thing that it has is it has the infrastructure to be twice as big as it is because it used to be back in the 50s, uh, twice yeah. as big. And he said, it can expand and not have to do a ton. I mean, I know, I know Steve, there is probably a lot that has to be done, but there's room to grow there. And I thought that was a really important aspect that maybe was kind of hard to quantify, but when we got there and we saw Huntington, we, we understood what he was talking about when he said that. And so, you know, that's one of the beautiful things about Huntington. It's very accessible um, and, it, and it has that room to grow. Um, so, you know, I love that about that area. Yeah, and you can say that about the state of West Virginia. All, all of that applies. I mean, you can duplicate this, this product here that you have across many communities in West Virginia. We all know Huntington's the center of the universe. And now Steve Roberts is a good friend of mine. And if you didn't know it before you met Steve Roberts, Huntington is the center of the entire universe. So Even I'm not up, saying it is. Uh, I'm just saying there's a more, more to the state that's out there that... Um, that you know, we could continue. That I think other people are trying to do that. But I think this message and this this per, this uh, relationship that you all have is a great formula for success statewide. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely. Let I want. Let I want me to pick mention. up on one thing. Uh, Go ahead, Steve. That said that uh, they say that pigs get fat and hogs get slaughtered. No, I, I'm not saying it all has to come to, to Huntington. We'll set the example for the rest of the state to be able to to follow that when you're not when you're just centric on what you have right in front of you then you don't get past uh your the, the first few steps but if you're looking at a broader vision to try to lift everybody up then that's when you find success yeah absolutely yeah, i'd like to add something to that because we we strongly believe in what you're saying steve in fact we have this term that we use a rising tide lifts all boats Yes, and yeah. when we think about New Force and we think about Generation West Virginia and all of the employers statewide that are hiring, it doesn't make sense for Core 10 if we try to be Core 10 centric and it's a land grab and we're just grabbing everybody for us. It yeah. makes sense, and it's a little counterintuitive, I think, sometimes. It makes sense if there's a huge ecosystem in the state and that there's companies all over the state hiring because people move around. And they might even leave Core 10 and go to another company in West Virginia. And if that's the right opportunity for them, we are happy for them. And they're going to learn something really great and they may come back and, and be further enriched. So for us, it's, it's about the whole community. It's about the whole state of West Virginia. And how do we, how do we lift that tide across the entire community? Absolutely. I want to, you know, just really leave from, from your perspective, I want to, I want to, mentioned something and you guys may not be aware of this uh, maybe you are but in 1961 a guy by the name of Mylan Pushkar and Don Panos started a company called Mylan in White Sulphur Springs and that company ended up moving to Morgantown and flourished and made a lot of millionaires uh, uh, out of that company and tomorrow uh, is the last day for what was formerly the Mylan plant now Viatris they, uh, they merged uh, back in December, and, and when they did, they announced that 1,500 high-quality jobs are going to be leaving Morgantown. And, the, you know, I went, my mom worked at, at Milan. I have a lot of friends who work at Milan, Beatrice, right now, that their last day on the job is tomorrow. 1,500 great jobs. And, you know, I, I, my wish is that every person there can listen to this conversation today because there is hope. There is opportunity here. Don't leave our state. Don't go to these other towns and communities we're talking about. We need you here in West Virginia. You know, whether it's manufacturing or you know, getting plugged in with new force and getting a, a new certificate. Maybe you have an encore career and maybe you've been working at, at Milan for 20 years. There's opportunity, right? There's opportunity here. Don't leave get plugged in. There's tons of people that want to help you succeed in this. Natalie, did you have something you wanted to add? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a great segue for what was on my mind, which I appreciate the conversation we've had around like this. We're not coming from a scarcity mindset here. And I think that's really important. And I love what you said about vision, about what could be and should be. But I think what's also really important is recognizing what is like part of this that we're talking about is like what is happening and that vision 
I'm a data nerd. And like, for me, vision also comes from like what's happening right now. It's already possible. And we're seeing it, you know, maybe on a small scale, but it's possible and happening. And I think that's really where this vision is coming from is it's not hypothetical. It's not a pipe dream. Like it's happening. And when we're able to really show that it's possible and happening, that helps other people join us too. I think what has been so cool is, you know, we're graduating from New Force, about 15 people in each cohort, or we're accepting, um, you know, about 15 folks to our fellowship program. That's not going to save the state all on its own. But what is particularly powerful in addition to the impacts that we're having there is that we're showing that it's possible. Every impact fellowship application or new force application, I'll have people reach out to us that maybe aren't even applying themselves or they don't get accepted. And what they say is, look, by just seeing that these kinds of jobs are out there or this pathway is out there, I'm more confident that I can do it, that maybe I can come back or maybe I can be a part of this at some point. Like that pathway is here and happening now. Um, and so I just wanted to name that I think part of what is so inspiring to me about the vision that, that I'm hearing from all of us today is that it's actually already happening. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love that. A couple of weeks ago, um, one of our uh, media partners is the state journal and they have an annual event that's been going on for years and years. It's called 40 under 40 generation next. And they celebrate uh, 40, 40 people, 40 leaders uh, uh, in business around the state. And, and I was fortunate enough to go to that, um, that event live and in at the Robinson grand theater in Clarksburg. And uh, if you guys haven't been to that theater, you got to go see it. It's amazing. Recently uh, renovated. But the keynote speaker was J.B. McCuskey, who's our state treasurer. And I don't know if you guys know J.B. I'd yeah. never met him before until that night, but I had a chance to hear him speak. And he delivered a message that was so powerful. And, and the essence of his, his talk was, you know, it, there's an easy way to do things. And then there's a, 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 maybe a better way to do things. And he talked about like, it's easy to take a tech job in Charlotte, North Carolina, or, or Austin, Texas, or, or Silicon Valley. But, you know, you, you can, you could take a job here in West Virginia and make a giant difference. If you go to those big cities, there's gazillions of people doing the same exact thing. And you're, you have a nice house and a nice job and a nice salary, but you're not really having an impact. You could have a massive impact when you do those things here in our state, you know, and, and like, uh, I, I can't remember who said, you know, we have room to grow right here. If maybe it was Steve that mentioned that, yeah. you know, we have room to grow. Yeah. You could be a, a, a big fish in a small pond and have tremendous significance here in West Virginia. And I think that's a cool thing. I think it's a, a, a really one of the most powerful things in West Virginia and Sarah Biller likes to call it a short ladder, but you, you can make, you can get so much done so quickly and the doors open so quickly for everybody. And it, it, we can, this is our state, our cities, our communities, it's up to us and we can do it and we do do it. And I think your point, Natalie, is we're doing it and we're doing it in pockets across the state. There's certainly, Sarah Bill is certainly making a huge impact for West Virginia as well. And I think in every community, you see that the Ascend program, you know, a lot of these things that are happening, we're gaining so much momentum. And I think sometimes having the conversation with one another and being able to share those stories with one another, like you're doing on this show, Jim, and being able to just realize the potential in West Virginia and what a vast difference one person can make and does make um, in, in our communities and in our state. It's it's just one of the gifts you get. You're not going to have an impact in Charlotte. No one's going to know who you are and no one really cares. But here, you matter. And it's one of the most beautiful things about living in the state of West Virginia to me. And, you know, I, I think early on you talked about our um, Nobelian ingenuity. I don't think you called it that. I think you called it applied <laughs> engineering. Um, and and so it, the, the John Chambers and the Brad Smiths like to also talk about not only do the people in West Virginia know how to fix that car when you're broken down on the side of the road, but they will stop and fix that car. And it's a yeah. different mindset we have in West Virginia. It's an abundance mentality, uh, like just built into our DNA as well. I think just helping other people out, sharing your stories, lifting people up together. Awesome. Guys, as we close out our time here, one of the things I always like to do each week is go around the horn and, and uh, in rapid succession and just kind of get a sense of the thing that you're most optimistic about right now. I'd love to start with Lee and we'll just kind of go around the horn. 
Okay, so I'm optimistic about the power of community banking. That's one of the things we're focused on. Um, the, the pandemic has taught us that people are increasingly digital and it's giving our community banks a real opportunity to transform themselves. And one of the things that we're trying to do is help them do so in an affordable manner. So I'm just super excited about what our community banks can bring back to our communities. That's awesome. Such an important thing. Steve, what's something you're optimistic about right now? I'm optimistic about our own uh, homegrown ingenuity, that we can figure out how to be able to, to not only succeed, but, but to lead. I want to leave with a very uh, encouraging message uh, to folks in Morgantown and uh, those who are losing their closing their jobs uh, to tomorrow. Um, if a ship was going down, wouldn't it be wonderful if that ship was going down right next to some place that could be able to save it? They're sitting in Morgantown, West Virginia, West Virginia University. My prediction is, is that uh, yes, we will rebound from this. I'm not uh, downplaying at all the tragedy that is affecting uh, the, the families, but this is going to prove to be a spark for some individuals that are going to start their own businesses and enterprises are going to grow out of this. And the beauty of it is, if it's going to happen, I want it to be in Morgantown, West Virginia, where I have West Virginia University and all the resources that are available. The community will come together. There's a formula that works. Collaboration leads to partnerships. Partnerships help establish trust. All of that, the outcome is hope. Morgantown has it because it's in West Virginia and that's the way that we do things. I love it. Thank you, Steve. Natalie, what's something you're optimistic about right now? I am so optimistic about the placement rate that we are seeing at New Force right now. And I think that it really shows how much potential there is in this sector um, during COVID, post COVID. I also just would be remiss if I didn't share that I'm also unbelievably optimistic about the power of partnerships with community and technical colleges, uh, with everybody, but I just am so grateful for the college, community technical college system in this state. And one, one of the main reasons that we're seeing such high placement rate for New Force is because of an amazing program called Learn and Earn, um, which is available across the state for a lot of employers. But through our partnership, it means that any employer that hires one of our New Force grads is able to receive up to 50% salary reimbursement for the first six months with their, that they're on the job, supporting wow. that continued on the job training. It is remarkable. It is a national best practice that is allowing people like Lee to really bring folks on from our program and continue to support their on the job training. So I am optimistic about partnerships like that, that are making it possible for employers to hire great people and for great people to stay in the state. Love it, Jordan. Yeah, um, I'm optimistic about the increasing numbers of remote opportunities that we're seeing post COVID. Um, I think a lot of companies are figuring out that remote teams are working well for them and that people can be productive in their home offices. And that means that our students can stay in their communities um, with their people that they already care about and the things that they're already involved in um, and still have the same access to really good jobs that you would have in Charlotte. Um, so I think that's going to really help us keep people where they're happy and still give them opportunities. Love it. Love that, Jordan. Thank you. Mary, I want to close it out with you. Okay, so um, I have to give a shout out to Kathy Burns in Huntington as well for connecting me to some of you people. And she's, she does tremendous work in Huntington. But yeah. I am optimistic about the diversification of our economy. I love that the fintech sector and the technology sector is gaining momentum and people are recognizing it as um, something that can be transformative. I'm very optimistic about diversifying our, our economy and helping that grow West Virginia and keeping people here. I love it. Thank you very much, Mike. My friend John Maxwell says, 
everything rises and falls on leadership. And I'm optimistic that we have outstanding leaders like every one of you on this call today. I'm grateful for each one of you. Our guests today, once again, are Natalie Roper. She's the executive director at Generation West Virginia. Lee Farabaugh, co-founder and president at Core 10. Jordan Castello, she is the lead instructor at New Force. And Stephen Williams, mayor of Huntington. Of course, my lovely and talented co-host, Mary Cook, the uh, co-owner or the owner and founder of Nexus Now Consulting. Guys, I, I really appreciate having you guys on, on the podcast and the, in the episode today. Folks, that's it for today's episode of Positively West Virginia's Small Business Mastermind. Our hope is that we brought you some valuable insight that you could use in your business, in your career to win. I also want to take a moment to thank our sponsors for Positively West Virginia's Small Business Mastermind, and they include the State Journal, WVNews.com, and Interaction Media. Positively West Virginia is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. You can learn more about our mission of advancing small business and entrepreneurship in West Virginia at PositivelyWV.com. On behalf of our entire Interaction Media and Positively West Virginia team, including our producer today, Mr. Hampton Hill, I'm your host Jim Matuga. Stay positive West Virginia. For more positive stories of people and businesses doing amazing things all across the Mountain State, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And also we live stream every week on Facebook Live. Stay positive West Virginia.